In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a structural roof truss layout plan, not just how to use AutoCAD to do it, but actually to explain along the way what the different members are and how you lay them out. I'm going to do the videos in two parts. The first part, I'm just going to explain the different types of roof trusses. And in the second part, I'm going to show you how I do the layout. As a part of the roof layout plan for the trusses, I'm just going to talk about the different types of trusses that we're going to be using in the roof plan. Now this is a, a standard A-shaped girder truss, so it looks like your normal standard type of A-shaped truss. Uh, often the girder truss though has a thicker bottom cord and the reason for that is because it's going to be supporting on it all the other trusses that are going to be butting into it and uh, be supported on the bottom cord. So it's often thicker or sometimes there's two or three of these trusses laminated together. Uh, often the nail plates need to be much bigger than probably what I'm showing, this is just indicative. And obviously the uh, the web profiles can change and other factors, but this is the, the, the key part really of a, of a girder truss, is its ability to carry other trusses. And it does that using what are called truss boots, which is a just a type of metal, um, sort of U-shaped thing, um, that is bolted onto the to the truss and then the other trusses sit on it. This is a truncated girder truss. So if you compare the two, they're very similar. Again, I'm showing a, a thicker bottom cord here. Again, these, these are, this is not drawn quite correctly, but anyway, well, I just want to show you what the point here is. So it's truncated because it doesn't go, it doesn't have a peak, it doesn't have the A frame, it, it, it's cut off. And the reason for that is, if we, is because um, the hip trusses butt into this, they're supported on this, as well as the jack, jack trusses. And what happens is, this is a um, this would be a hip or a, or a jack truss. So what would happen is, we would have the girder truss would go to, say, here. That's looking side on, and that's obviously looking front on. So this is the girder truss, and we'll say this is the bottom cord, just here. We've got the bottom cord here, looking at it, section through it. And there'll be a boot that goes on the side here. And these trusses sit on it. And the reason for the truncation is that this overhang, however long it will be, actually goes up over. So this is the area here where the the trusses go up. And the over the top the top um, the top cord overhang goes up over. And that's why that's cut out there. And that forms the usually the part of the hip roof at the very top going towards the ridge. This truss here is our standard A-frame type truss and that's the one that you generally use in most roofs. It's the most common one that you usually find. Um, a gable roof will pretty much primarily use just these. Now this shape here is the same shape, let's get delete this, is the same shape for both the, the jack truss and the hip truss. Now the difference is the girder truss, uh, sorry, the girder, the hip truss does carry a bit more weight, so it, it's um, often a bit stronger. Um, the, the grade of timber that's used will often be thickened up. But there's another thing we you can't really see in the 2D here is the way they cut the angles because the um, the hip truss will actually be on a 45 degree, so often the the, the overhang will need to be cut uh, correctly to to suit that and uh, the jack truss doesn't have that generally, but they, they look the same. Um, it's just that, uh, yeah, one is, I mean, the hip truss is usually longer because of just the nature of, you know, 45 degree angles. I mean, we've got over here. So we've got a, we've got that, that's, that's the hip there, the orange one, and there's the jack. So you can see that this is much longer. Okay, and here's our um, girder truss too. So the truncation would be probably about here and about here, so it allows that hip top cord to go over, as well as that little portion there of the, the jack as well. And this last one here, this is our valley truss. So it's just a, it's um, usually doesn't have any webs in it usually. Um, sometimes they, they might, but, uh, or if they do, they might have uh, just one one post. So something like, um, 
something like that. That depends on the trust because they're not really doing a tremendous amount because they're sitting on top of another trust. But uh, yeah, value trusts are basic little things like that. Hi everyone. Uh, this video, I'm going to show you how to do a structural roof layout plan using roof trusses. A similar idea with um, if you're just using rafters. I'm doing this video because uh, this plan I've actually got here is a video I did of a, a roof plan to show you how to draw a hip roof plan. And I'm going to use this as a basis for showing you how to lay out the trusses. So the basic trusses we we'll have when we do a trust roof usually, um, at least uh, the very basic is a standard truss, which is an A-shape. Then we have structural um, trusses. Well, well, they're all structural, but this one's called girders or truncated girder trusses. And those particular trusses carry the weight of other trusses loading onto them. And we'll get into that. Then there's, in terms of the, um, the hip here, we have, um, we have our hip uh, tr uh, trusses and we'll have, coming off that, jack trusses and also creepers. And in this case, we'll probably have some valley trusses too. So we'll get into that. So I've created a, a layer here uh, or a few layers here to do with trusses. And what I'm going to first do is I'm going to lay out where my girders and truncated girders are. Now in Australia, most building is worked out in increments of 300. So three, six, nine, 12 in most cases. Uh, in some cases, it's 450 to 900, 1350 and so on. Uh, in terms of the roof trusses, they're usually spaced for a tiled roof at 600 centers, at 600 millimeters, um, or at, for a, a sheet roof, such as corrugated iron, usually 900 millimeter centers. Of course, you can change that, and um, sometimes it means you've got to beef up the trusses a bit if you want to space them out a bit more. But now we're going to lay our first truss down, which is one of these structural ones, and it's going to be a, the truncated girder truss. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line here, and now I'm going to grab this line and I'm going to move it. Now, I've, um, the way I'm moving it there, um, what I'll do is, I'll show you again. I'll just, so I'll select the truss. I'm selecting the, the grip so it's hot. I'm pressing the space bar. And when I press it, you'll see down here on the bottom left, changes to move. And I've got my F8 key on. See, that's without F8 on, F8 on, okay. Sorry, off and on. Now I'm going to move this up. Um, Let's see, maybe 1800, that's 1800 millimeters. Okay, so that's where the first one goes. Now, of course, we're looking in plan here, and I will show you some uh, better pictures of how this works later in terms of uh, 3D, so you get a bit of an idea in your mind. So this is the first truss, the truncated girder, and what will happen here is we'll have trusses going up here, which will be the hip trusses, which will follow, follow those lines there. And then we'll have the jack trusses, that'll go across, and then the uh, the creepers coming off of there as well. But let's put these um, these truncated girders in. Now in terms of doing truss roofs too, I was gonna move this one perhaps uh, about the same, maybe 1800. The distance that I'm actually um, moving this, so from the, the girder to the, to the face of the wall, that distance is actually called the station. And I don't know why it's called that, but uh, <laughs> it is called that. I'm just going to change this to a polyline, so it's a bit easier to see. So, right. Now here, we're going to need some girders, and they're the ones that, um, they work exactly the same in terms of um, carrying the load of other trusses, um, but a girder truss generally looks more like an A-shape, where the uh, truncated girder truss is basically an A-shape, but then it's cut off. Um, and as I said, I will show diagrams that make that clear for you. So I'm going to change my layer to girder. And I'm going to need to put a girder here. All right. Across here. Now, I haven't actually extended these as well. I'll just make a note. These trusses out to the eave line. Um, they would technically extend out um, if, the, if there are eaves. And I'm going to put another one. Uh, whoops. Do the polyline. Put another one here. Uh, to be actually more clear, actually, what I'm going to do is I have these walls here, because it's going to be a little bit confusing. I'm going to offset these walls at, at 90 millimeters, because from recollection, I'm just going to check the distance. Oops. Uh, that's a 240 
thick wall, which would be a brick veneer. So that means we'd have a 90 millimeter uh, thick stud wall. Now, the trusses would actually sit on the stud wall. So with this poly line, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, but here we go. So it sit something more like, uh, more like that. Um, so yeah, so it's actually sitting on on there, or or it could. Uh, sorry, it would come more like here. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I might just change the color so I can see that a little bit better. Right, and that looks okay there. I'll come back a little bit. Right. All right, so we've got that, and now what we're going to do is we're going to put some truncated girder trusses in. So I'm going to do another polyline. Just draw that to there for now. And now I'm going to move it again. So it's coming up to perhaps about, I want to say 2400. So basically the reason the, the girder truss is not going, I mean, you could technically take it all the way up there, a um, bit tricky because of the way yeah, the other trusses are going to come in um, but the reason you have girder trusses is so when the trusses that come into it say the hip or the the jack trusses they'll they'll the, the bottom cords will sit on top of this um, truss but the uh, the top cord will actually um, extend past to make up this area here so I'll, I'll get into that more so what i'm going to do is just going to copy another, another one of those We said 2400. Okay, I'm not sure that's actually set the right distance there. Yep, that is right. Okay. So, actually, what we're going to do, I did have that sort of right. Um, probably set that about there. All right. It's been a while since I've done one of these, so <laughs> um, yeah, making a few little adjustments there. So yeah, basically, see so as you can see already, this truncated girder truss would be actually uh, loading onto this truss. So this one here is carrying the load of this one. And sometimes these can be um, not just one truss. Sometimes they can be two or three uh, trusses thick. Um, they're they're, um, they're basically laminated together. So looking at this, I believe I have got all my uh, truncated uh, girder trusses and trusses in, uh, and girder trusses in place. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to standard trusses, and we'll say that this is a um, a tiled roof, so we'll do it at 600 centers. So I'm just going to draw truss up here. Now there's different ways to do this. Um, put a truss there. I'm just going to check the distance. So I want it to be uh, 600 centers, so that's 700. So, um, so now keeping that in mind, these need to be 600 apart, and that's 700. That's too wide. So, you would probably think what I could do is then bring this forward, but by doing that, this would also have to be truncated. So the better method in this case would to be bring this up another, say, 300. Okay, and I can just load that on the same truss, and this one. Okay, so now I check the distance. Whoops. We're at the 400, so I can go 200 this way. I'm going to copy one over here. Whoop. Whoops. So then I'll move that 600 and we'll check the distance between those two. That's 500, so that's, that's perfect. So. It doesn't have to be exactly always 600. It has to be at least, uh, or should I say, no more than 600 wide. So if this was you know, 600 or less this distance, that's quite fine. But if it's um, yeah, over that, that's, uh, yeah, then you'll have to do something like I just did then, which was to uh, change these um, distances. So these are the A-shaped type trusses. And here we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna move this 600 up. And that's right on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both these and then move both those up 300. So there we go. 
And now I can just offset. So O for offset, type 600, press enter, select, move. Okay. All right, so we've got those there. And again, we've got these here. So we're gonna fill that in with the standard trusses. So I'll move it 600. So that's, that's good, that's fine. We don't have to do anything there. And now I'm gonna offset again. Okay. So next thing we wanna do is, and I didn't actually create something for this. Uh, let's create a new layer. I'm just gonna call it truss hip. And I might change that color to, uh, maybe we'll just make it um, yellow, okay. Oh, here we go. So the truss, uh, the hip ones are the 45 degree angle ones. So there'd be a truss that goes down there. Oh, that's uh, a line just a minute. So I'll explain in a minute what's going on here. I'm just gonna stop that there, then I'm gonna extend it. So EX for extend. And again, polyline. Okay, so <clears throat> what's happening here, it's a little hard to understand, is that this truss, the bottom cord, um, goes up to here. The bottom cord's resting on this girder truss. Then the top cord is going over that truncated area, straight over to here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the jack trusses. Again, I'm not really certain about why these are called what they are. So I'm gonna put one here. And jack trusses from recollection, <laughs> um, they sit on um, the girder truss. Well, should probably come back a little bit. Perhaps I can make 50 millimeters. Okay, and um, they actually do they, they sit on there and they'll fly up to, the top cord of them will fly up to the hip. But um, we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna offset 600. Let's see where we are. Not quite centered. So what I'm gonna do is to center that. I'm gonna draw a line between the two. I'm gonna select the line, select this one, select this one. I'm gonna select the middle. And I'm gonna press the space bar. Hold down my shift key. Press my right mouse button. And I'm gonna say mid between two points. So then I can go mid between, I'm dragging a line here, there, and there. Okay, so that's, they're in the middle, that's 600. And I can extend those AX for extend, up to the hip. Okay. And I can just copy these across on the other side. So there we go, they're sitting on both the girder and also the truncated girder there. And I'm just gonna check the distance here first. So 700. So what I can do is draw a line. Um, here we go, I'm going to do the actual eaves here. All right. And then I'm gonna move that. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll go 300. I'll move a copy to 600. And then I can just trim. So TR for trim. And we've got one more here. And I'm gonna assume it's similar. Let's have a look. 900, okay. So let's grab one of these. Move that here. And I'll offset. Do I go oh, 600? Yeah, it's too far, okay. So I'm gonna Oops, just trim that off, okay. So we've got jack trusses in place, they're the blue ones. Now we're gonna put in our creepers. Now the creepers, um, they go, they um, they support on the, the hips and then obviously loading on the top of the stud wall as well. So I'm just going to draw a line here. I'm gonna move it 600, oops. And I'm gonna trim that. Creepers don't have uh, top cords that extend. So now I can just offset 600. 
Okay, I'll get rid of that one for now. For now. I'm gonna trim. And I can just rotate that 90 degrees. And I'll copy over here, in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend all these to, to the, where they should go, just to the eave. And up to there. Okay, that looks okay. Um, just thinking about this connection here, that probably wouldn't go like that actually, from memory. I used to work in a trust place a long time, a very long time ago. Uh, about, oh, about 20 years ago now, when I first started. Um, so I should remember all this stuff, but it's been a long time. Okay. So we've got the, yeah, so basically we've got the, the girder truss um, overhang going over and then the, the hip truss going into that connection. So, we've got the creeper trusses here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line here, right in the middle. Select that, and I select all these. I'm going to select the grip, which is the blue thing, so it's hot. The red means hot. Press the space bar, press the space bar again, press the space bar again, and one more time. And you'll see down the left here, bottom left, it says mirror. Then I'm going to press C for copy. I'll move my mouse and left click, and let's copy the, the other side. Okay. And we'll do the same thing here. So go to there, and then we'll move that down 600 and offset 600. And then we can just trim. Okay. We'll just move a copy to each one of these ends and then we can extend. All right, I'm gonna just draw another line from that center point. Again, I'm gonna select all these, all these creepers. Select the hot, uh, sorry, select the grip, make it hot. Press the space bar until we go down to mirror. Press C for copy space and then move our mouse and then left click and then we can just extend using EX, EX or extend, press space and then oh, that one's too far, the wrong way. All right, so we get those coming together and what we want to do is we want to copy, we want to copy all these now to the other side, so select all those and we'll grab this part here, mirror again Press C for copy, and there we go. Okay, so then we're gonna trim those off. They're sitting on the girder, so. And, hmm, just trying to think about that there. Oh, I'll tell you what, what's happening here. Um, have to think about that actually, because I'm not sure that's quite right, <laughs> to be honest. Um, what I, as I said, it's a long time ago since I used to do this, and we had special software that would help us with this, all this stuff. But even that used to make errors, so uh, I'd have to think about it, but I'm not gonna waste time on that for now. So moving at 600, I'll just trim it. All right, and then offset 600 again, down. Let me rotate. 90 degrees a copy. And whoops. Copy and copy. Now I can just trim those off. And I'm gonna draw another line and we're gonna copy all those or mirror them, mirror copy over the other side. So select the grip, press space through the mirror, see for copy, and then we go. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. But we're actually, um, you may have noticed, uh, it's very hard to read sometimes uh, roof plans because, well, they are kind of complicated. We're basically building the entire roof using triangles. And at this, this point here, what's actually happening, I'll just draw a little thing. So 
at the moment. Okay, so we'll have a we'll have a, uh, a Gerda truss here. That's that Gerda truss, and this is just the roof shape. But obviously, the roof at this stage would look something like like that. But obviously, we don't want this this gap here, this fall. And you can see the roof line coming through here. This is the this is the ridge. So we want this ridge to come all the way through. But at this stage, um, well, let's just say that this here is the jack or is um is one of the creepers. Um, so and that's going to go all the way up to here. All right. So this ridge part here at this stage is not been has not been filled out. And this area here is where the valley trusses come in. So they're, again, they're, just, they're basically triangles. They're, they're not, I mean, they do have structural uh, element to them, but they, what they basically do is they literally, um, they just sit, I mean, I know we're looking side on here, and they, they all get a bit smaller as it goes up, but they're the same spacing, 600. I know I haven't done any of this to any kind of scale or proportion probably, but um, no, we'll just leave that there. So basically that's what they do. Um, they sit on top of the other trusses um, and it's to form, I mean, they, they can sit on a, a jack, they can sit on um, a standard truss, uh, they can sit on anything to form out these little parts so that the ridge comes through correctly. So I think I've got one there, do I? Uh, no, nope, I haven't got one, a layer for that either. So we'll create a layer for that. So, truss belly, and we'll change the color. Um, I'm trying to think good colors to use because sometimes things don't read very well on the screen when you put them on YouTube. Um, uh, so I could pick a blue, but it'd be too dark. Um, perhaps that. Hopefully that looks okay. No, that's very close to the other one. Uh, go with yellow. We've already got yellow, sort of, I think. Yeah, we do. Um, oh, we'll go with purple and see how we go. So basically, I'm going to draw another polyline, and I'm just going to draw it from the um, from the girder. And for rec recollection, actually, well, I'm not on the right layer. Um, right, uh, I, uh, valley trusses don't have overhangs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this 600. Okay, I'm going to offset that 600. I'm going to trim it. Now what I'm trimming it to is actually the um, the valley. This is literally called the valley here on the roof. So these are valley trusses and they, that's, um, <laughs> they do form a part of the valley there. So that's what they're doing. They are sitting on top of these creepers and these jack trusses to form up that part there. And we've got the same thing going on over here. So what I might just do is, so you can see a bit more clearly, just turn off these. Um, yeah, so I'll just turn off the hip trusses. So the hip trusses are coming right through, but you can see the, the ridge line. These are white lines. These are the actual roof lines. So um, that's what's going on there. But, uh, we'll just turn that back on. So draw a cluster here, and I'll move that up 600. And I'll offset 600 again. Okay, I'm going to trim this. And as I was saying this before, I know it's very complicated <laughs> roof sometimes because you're looking at triangles and you're looking at it in 2D, which is something that is actually 3D. So it can take a lot of practice sometimes um, to visualize what's going on. And I just noticed I haven't extended these either. Uh, so, um, and I'm trying to think what we do there. Yeah, this is some of these joints I'd have to think about. But um, this is basically um, a roof plan using trusses. And another thing I'll, I will point out is that um, it's going to offset 600 here. It's probably not a big deal, but when you start to get to the very, very end of a hip, 
uh, hip truss like this or hip rafter, you won't have a truss coming off of there if you need to. It'll be just a, just a piece of timber. Um, in Australia, usually 90 by 35 or in America, I guess you'd probably use two by four or something like that, I suppose. Um, so this is, yeah, this is basically it. So I'm going to show you some of the, the trusses. Um, I will go back and edit this video to give it, hopefully give you some more clarity. But this is the plan. So um, I'll try and explain that more in, in doing some other things.